Hello. This video is going to um, discuss the chat room lab, uh, the networking chat room. Um, the basic idea is that a server, this will be a, an opportunity to exercise your, uh, your newfound skills with sockets and with threads, um, be Basic idea is that the server monitors and messages and sends out uh, messages to all the clients, clients, and each client is its own chat room uh, or a chat where uh, each client is types in messages and perhaps uh, and receives messages from everybody else in the group. So. As with most labs, you uh, are going to receive a lot of uh, a lot of the code. Here's the basic layout, basic class diagram. So you do not need to to modify the GUI at all, uh, but the GUI has basically three buttons: an exit, of course, and a start server button and a start client button. The start server button only operates once to start the server. And then the client um, hopefully it operates multiple times to set up various clients. So let's talk about the, the GUI, the, the chat server side, the server side. So when you select start server, the class that's going to start is chat server exec. Now chat server exec inter, um, implements the chat server exec interface. The only method that it has is start server. You may say, well, why do we start a separate server as well as the executive? Well, the executive um, operates in the same thread as the GUI. So the, once the, when, when the chat server exec is running, you can't click any more buttons, so you can't start any clients. So the chat server exec basically spawns a chat server and then exits. That's all it does in start server. Now the each now the, the single chat server, you notice a one-to-one -one correspondence there. The chat server has at least two met two attributes, names and writers. So the chat server then um, goes into it, calls the accept method, and waits until a client joins. When a giant, when a client joins, it goes through various application uh, level protocols, and to see if the name that the client submits has already been is already in use, because in this, in this chat server there's only one uh, the names need to be unique that's how you identify the different clients and the chat server also sets up a writer and adds it to this list of this hash set of writers um, the writer is the output to that specific client the client who's just joined and then um, the chat server creates a, what's called a, what we call a server thread for client. There's one server thread for each client. And that server thread's job is to listen for messages and to um, it, it receives all the writers from the uh, chat server, it has access to them, and uh, its job is to publish all the messages that this one client sent to all the other clients. So on the client side, um, there's a, a similar setup, the chat client exec, all it's responsible for is to start client. 
and it starts as an individual client. And uh, that client is also put in a thread. And uh, that client responds to all of the application level protocol. The chat server responds to uh, submit name, wrong name, and name accepted. The client responds to those three plus message. Once it gets past the name accepted, message or protocol, then all it does is, is send messages. So in the lab document are a set of uh, classes and a short description of each of those things. And then there's, as with most labs, there's a set of tasks. So task one is start a thread. Create a thread containing the server instance and start the thread. In chat server, create a server socket, server side socket. And you can uncom uncomment the line so the console, console reflects that a server was started. And number three, uh, you won't be able to, you'll be able to start the server and launch clients, but you won't be able to enter anything in the text field. Task number two, you create in and out streams for the chat server. In task three, you create the client in the same way that you created the server and uh, set up in and out streams. And then task number four, you run it and take a screenshot of, the, uh, of several clients communicating. So let me show you what the uh, what the GUI looks like. First you start the server. Um, it has the list of names up there and the uh, it says the the chat server is running. So now you start a client and you won't get this message about is the server on this machine. But choose a screen name, let's say Billy Bob. Okay, so that was accepted and it sent back to the uh, to the chat room driver um, that or the client, the, the server rather that the name was accepted. Or actually this is the client side. And the client received it, received submit name, it received name accepted. So let's start another one. Mary Jo. Okay, so now we have Mary Jo over to the right, Billy Bob to the left. And the message gets reflected on both servers. And then uh, and Billy Bob responds, and the message is reflected on both servers, on both clients, rather. So take a screenshot of these, these three, at least these three, at least two clients. You could start more clients. Um, If you duplicate the name, whoops, ah, so the uh, down here, the the uh, screen name was refused. There's not a lot of fancy. Uh, So it does tell you that such and such name is already in use.
So there we go. Joe is on. And now you can uh, type messages in the chat client. So let's go to the to the code, the actual code that you're going to download. And what I want to inform you of, first of all, this lab used to be a, a programming assignment. So you should feel lucky that you don't, uh, don't have to do the whole thing. But what you do need to do is look through each of the files that you download and find anything that says student and do what it says. Edit the class header so that chat server can run in a thread. So you want to implement runnable. And then later on, uh, create a server socket. This is the run method. Um, listen for a client to join. That's the accept method. Um, request a name from this client and keep requesting until a name is submitted. So that's this is the requesting a name from the client and uh, so forth. So be sure that you search each of these files for student and do what it says. And that is basically the lab. The client side of this is pretty straightforward as well. The client side, the, the um, client side has, creates a one of these windows, the GUI, and uh, it follows the protocol, the application level protocol, by sending messages with four four uh, strings. The only one after it gets through the the initial wicket of getting the right name, uh, then it'll send messages only. Okay, so that is the chat lab.